Welcome back to the Vantage Point final segment. Popeye, man, thank you so very much for rolling with me, and uh, it's been a great show. No problem, Mike. It's always an honor to come on your show. Yeah, you know how it is, man. It's just uh, just craziness, man. It's you know keeping up with everything. But talking about this whole idea of de- of depression and pill popping, and they want to put lithium in the water and everything else in the sun. Look, people's brain chemistries. I just have to say it are not like what they used to be 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, okay? We've got electromagnetic junk everywhere, okay? We're in a rat race, in a rut, all right? We're eating crap. We're drinking, you know, genetically modified crap. We're drinking high fructose uh, cocktail, you know, cocktails, <laughs> and, you know, and, you know, our brains are just reeling from it and trying to remain to some degree of normal, and we're maladjusted. I, I, I wrote this in an article which I call the uh, Techno Rapture Soul Sucking Embrace um, about how people now today are so damn maladjusted because their brains are hardwired to live in a natural environment. And yet now we live in this technological society where there isn't much nature to be found. There is not much to be in tune with. And so people, like I said, you know, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, or whatnot, and distractions, keeping up with the Joneses, they have nothing to look forward to except to buy the next piece of crap thing they want to buy or kind of keep up with the Joneses and to look aloof, look like you have some money. They've got nothing. They've, they've got no focus, no goals, and, and nothing that they look forward to. And so, of course, you're going to have depression. Well, one of my favorite one of my favorite quotes, Mike, is, and I posted this on my Facebook earlier, and it's not really my Facebook. It's I don't have my own. I just have one for Federal Jack. Um, it is no measure of health to be well adjusted to a profoundly sick society. Yeah, so, exactly. Uh, you exactly. know, society is going to hell in a handbasket, and just because you're uh, well adjusted to the fact that it's going to hell doesn't mean that it's you know great. No. And, it's you the know, opposite. It, yeah, that means that's even worse because now you've just accepted it. You're not pissed off about it, which is pathetic. You know, and everybody's got a, like George Carlin said, everybody's got a cell phone that makes pancakes so they don't want to rock the boat. <laughs> you know, I suggest, I'm honestly thinking about getting rid of my phone. Uh, I'm going to have, uh, I'm thinking about going back to just a simple phone that I can make phone calls from or send a text from. And uh, I, I really want to drop my bill. Because I, I have uh, an Android phone and I pay, you know, uh, an astronomical amount of money a month. I mean, I have unlimited calls and stuff on it. But you know what? I, I, I really don't need all the bells and whistles and all the other crap that I have. I, I, have, I have an Android phone, too. And, you know, they, they make you get a data plan and all of that. And yeah, dude, you know, you the data plans more and everything else. I think when my contract's up, I'm going to just, uh, I think I'm just going to go back to a regular phone. And uh, you know what? It, I think it'll be a good thing. I'd rather go back to, uh, you know, go, I, I, if I want to send, if I want to talk to somebody, I'd, they can call me and I'll talk to them on the speakerphone. Or, uh, you know, I, I don't, I, I don't want to have a running text message conversation with people. No, who the hell wants to like, uh, sit there with itty bitty keyboard texting each other back and forth? I mean, uh, honestly, I'd rather meet someone eye to eye. You know, punch him in the. Let's go get a beer. Yeah, let's go yeah. get a beer or something. Let's go get a sandwich or something. Sit down. And if you can't, then get together and have a group conversations on Skype at least, yeah. where you're you're still talking to the person. You know, and then you're do you can be productive and do other things. Don't just sit around on your cell phone texting people. It's so it's- impersonal. Dude, we've lost our humanity. We don't get, I mean, like, you and I are, you know, hundreds of miles apart, yet I still, you know, I could talk to you on Skype and be like, hey, Mike, what's up? And we could sit and BS and, you know, I'm sitting having a sandwich at my place, or you can have a beer at your place, whatever. We still can have that kind of conversation. Whereas with, with texting and, like, <clears throat> I said on my show earlier, you see kids nowadays, and I even said it on your show, you know, in the first hour. You, Halloween, you don't see kids running around anymore. You see kids texting on their phones. When Do you see kids in restaurants even talking to their family anymore? Oh, man. I, I wrote about this last week about how, you know. It's crazy, a, right? At a, at a dinner table, right? I've seen this in so many different families. At a dinner table where everybody sits down and everybody's eating, they just throw around canned phrases. How's the weather? Well, you see the news? Blah, blah, blah. 
there is no real human communication. And guess what? At the same time, your brain is dying for it. Your brain wants communication. We're talking eye to eye, face to face communication. It's, it's, it's what we're all built on. It's how it's always been. And, and now everything's so damn impersonal. And so we lack it. And so we're maladjusted, degenerate little toadies all running around twittering each other. Check, uh, check out this article, Popeye. Teachers asked to inform on terror students. What frigging terror students? That's the title. I see. Now, I would have gone to jail. See, I, I'm telling you, dude, when I was a kid, the stuff that we did when I was a kid and that we got and I'm not saying we got away with a lot of, you know, you know, sometimes we got caught and got in trouble. But the stuff that we, you know, that we pulled off when we were kids, if we had done that now, we'd be in jail. Absolutely. I, you know, I remember fireworks, and I'm sure you flushed a cherry bomb down a toilet. Dude, I damn near burnt down a forest with fireworks. There you go. You see, and I'm sure you you probably got yelled at, maybe maybe at the most a fine. Nowadays, you'd have DHS coming down and locking you up at Guantanamo. You're on the list. You're on the do not do a damn thing list. Okay? Yeah, you can't do not fly, do not drive, do not have a car, do not pee, do not do anything. They actually have you. this on trains now. Okay, with with the Viper teams that do not, do not, do not, uh, I don't know, do not friggin' travel. How about that? Do not travel at all. Do not That's have why to I just, drive. Absolutely. But even even now, even now, what they're trying to do with this now is take away, you know, of course, while destroying the economy, people are relying upon public transportation. But at the same time now with the new cars now and everything's computerized, they want the car to drive. They don't want you to have any autonomy, but... Uh, back to this article here. This is this is just ridiculous. Teachers will be encouraged to inform on extremist students as part of a government counterterrorism strategy. What's an extremist student though? Like, when was the last time you walked into a high school and saw some kid? You know, at, at, every fifteen minutes he's praying to Allah in the back. Of, <laughs> I'm going to blow up the school. I'm going to blow. Are you kidding me? The, what they're trying to do is the kids that. That the kids that maybe wear an FU t-shirt or, God forbid, the kid wear a shirt that says 9-11 was an inside job to school. Radical! They'll lock him up quicker than you could blink. You know, I got a, I got a, I got a, a, a t-shirt and a hoodie uh, that's got my old website, thought-criminal.org, on it, right? But it's got, like, the, you know, the 1984 uh, uh, Big Brother on it. It's got the people doing, like, the VVV thing, right? VVV. And it says, big bold letters, thought at the bottom, criminal, thought, criminal, thought, criminal. And I'll go into your local Piggly Wiggly, <laughs> Win Dixie, Food Lion, uh, whatever, have the hell. I don't go to Walmart. Uh, I'll go some, I'll just up out in public, and I'll have this, this shirt on, hoodie on, and people look at me like I killed their daughters. Or I just like slaughtered, I slaughtered uh, their husbands right in front of them. They cannot but, handle it. But if you said that, like, you know, I was with the Federal Reserve, they'd probably love you. Oh, thank you for raping the country and destroying... You guys are so great. Thank you for working with President Obama to destroy the country. <laughs> that, that was sarcasm. Actually, you'd have to yeah, wear you know, you know what? You'd have to wear an I voted for Obama t-shirt to get that reaction. You know, it's funny, though. You see people that still have those stickers, you know, McCain, Palin, or, or Obama... Today, I'd be like, I'd be scratching them off. Oh, my dude, you know, I say to my wife all the time when I'm driving, I'm like, I wonder if that guy regrets that sticker. Dude, I'd be, <laughs> look, I would take my hands, okay? And I would, I would tear away, when I had to tear off the paint job, I would tear away at that sticker. I would be ashamed, okay? I, I got friends that still stand by him, man. And, you know, uh, one of my really good friends, he's a black guy, and he says to me, I don't care what Obama does. He's our first black president, so I want to support him. And I looked at him, and I was like, you're an idiot. And this is one of the smartest men I've ever met in my life. This guy's highly intelligent. And I was like, you know, that angers me. And he's like, why? And I'm like, because you're so stupid. I was like, don't you see? I'm like, you're being played. I'm like, and you can't see it. Yeah, that pisses me off, man. When it, especially when it's, you know, someone I'm close to. I, can, I mean, it irritates Dude, me in general. Look, but you know I, what I mean? Most people know that I'm black, right? My my family wanted to crucify me because I was not on the Obama bandwagon, okay? I'm not on well, anybody's bandwagon. Uncomfortable Thanksgiving. Oh, my God, man. I mean, like, I'm all, like, landed out, like, why I'm not going to vote for this guy, right? And they're just like, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter at all. But, you know, that's the whole thing. It's like they default back to their patterns. 
But man, we like fresh out of time, dude. We got to do it again sometime. Yeah, man. Anytime you want me on, let me know. And you're you're always welcome to come on my show, Mike. Whenever you want, you can come on as frequent as you'd like to. Oh, excellent, man. I appreciate it. Guys, we're fresh out of time. Got to go. Thank you so very much for listening. Mike and I thing coming up next. I'll be back next weekend. 